speaker. Okay. There we go. Right, so I think we should be good. Uh, good evening, guys. Hello, hello. Happy to see you again, guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being punctual. We have Mr. Jared Minhibar with us. How are you doing today, sir? How's your day going? We will also have Mr. Kevin Hernandez. How are you? We have Walter and we have Rodrigo Hernandez as well. Very nice. Are you guys related? Well, it's nice to see you again, guys. Thank you for coming. Happy to see you because uh, we have our class today and then uh, tomorrow, like I mentioned before, uh, in the previous classes, tomorrow we don't have classes. Uh, today we have the day off because of the holiday. So I hope you guys can enjoy and maybe spend time with your families. If you have to uh, maybe go out uh, with your families, to visit uh, uh, someone that already passed away and you want to go there uh, to honor their memories, that's <clears throat> that's very good and hopefully uh, you guys can uh, can do that and you guys can be just fine so again uh, thank you for coming guys thank you for being on time it's just uh, uh, we are just five for now but I'm sure that the rest of the class is going to join pretty soon there we go we have Dinora there we go thank you for coming Dinora thank you good evening how are you doing And then we have Daniela too. There we go, Miss Daniela. Miss Dani Benitez, what are you doing today? You doing fine? Hi, good evening. Good evening, Daniela. Well, thank you for coming again and welcome. Thank you. Welcome. All right, guys, so for today, we're going to continue with our uh, topic, I, I guess. I think that yesterday we discussed, uh, last night we discussed, like, personality types, like, uh, let's say, like, characteristics of personality. Like, for example, we talked about how people can be sociable, easygoing, egotistical, stingy, uh, unreliable. That kind of things, right? So now uh, you have more vocabulary that you can use so you can describe uh, somebody that you know. And I can see here that some people added some information to the like forum that we have on the website. So for example, we have Marilyn, we have, uh, excuse me, uh, let's see, my friend Marilyn, let me, let me check. I'm just not really sure. Let's see. Melissa, okay, Melissa. My best friend Marilyn is someone who is warm and sensitive. She's a person who always listens to my problems and tries to help me out. Okay, very good. So I can see that some of you did it. So that's fine. I think that you guys don't have to. It's not like mandatory. But thank you for uh, sharing. Vamos a ver. Bueno, entonces para ahora, guys, eh, vamos a continuar con nuestros temas. Eh, les estaba mencionando antes, y como hemos venido hablando, mañana no tenemos clases, tenemos clases el viernes, así que espero que mañana puedan disfrutar, si tienen el día libre, ojalá que sí, ¿verdad? Eh, no sean como, como me pasa a mí, que yo tengo que trabajar a pesar de que es día feriado, eh, pero bueno, así es la vida, ¿verdad? ¿Qué se le va a hacer? Hay que trabajar, hay que estar contentos, cuando se puede trabajar, hay que hacerlo también. Así que, si descansan, pues espero que lo disfruten, que puedan pasar tiempo con sus familias. Y si van a ir a conmemorar a alguien, una persona eh, importante, que puedan regresar con bien a sus casas. Así que vamos a vernos hasta el viernes. Mañana no hay clase, sino que hasta el viernes, ¿ok? So, for today, guys, what are we going to do for today? We have, uh, we need to continue with the topics because we need to cover section one and section two, just like I told you before. So we need to continue, we need to move on. Vamos a ver. Vamos a compartir por acá. No sé si me... Vamos a ver. 
Bueno, vamos a ver qué tal, cómo están. ¿Qué me cuentan de su día? ¿Qué, qué tal su día, guys? ¿Qué han hecho ahora? Cuéntenme, a ver. ¿Trabajaron? Lo más seguro es que trabajaron. What did you guys do today? Anything exciting? Uh, did you guys, like, did anything interesting happen to you guys today? Like, in my case, uh, I think that it wasn't, like, really that exciting. I just, I just worked. And then I just got ready for the class. So it's kind of boring. <laughs> just work only. I don't know about you. But today it's not been raining that much. It's been different than yesterday. Yesterday it was raining like all day, but not today. Did you guys go out today? Do you guys go somewhere? Or do you guys work from home? What do you think about that? Do you guys like to work from home or or not? You do. You do, Jacqueline. Do you go uh, do you work from home, Jacqueline? Or Yes, I'm still working from home and I love it. Awesome, yeah. The best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I agree with you, yeah, because I mean you don't have to spend a lot of time stuck in mm -hmm. traffic, which is really yeah. bad. And I mean you have to spend uh money on transportation. Or and... food that sometimes you buy like, terrible food. <laughs> that is true, yes. I totally agree with you. Because I I remember that when I used to go out before to buy food, just like you said that is Awful, like terrible food that I don't like. So I, yes. I completely agree with you. Sí, eso es. Eh, gracias, Jacqueline. Eh, yo la verdad que prefiero eso, especialmente ahora porque yo en particular tengo una forma en la que me gusta comer. Entonces, estoy bien como quisquilloso, ¿verdad? I'm really a picky eater, guys. I'm really picky. So I don't eat like anything. I'm, I'm just like. I don't like really fatty food. I don't I don't like like really sugary uh beverages, you know? And almost everywhere that I go to, they always have uh drinks with a lot of sugar, and I don't like it. Because I think that that is not healthy at the end. But I think that you, that's usually the way that everybody likes it, but that's not good. A mí me ha pasado que, como experiencias personales, ¿verdad? Que a veces voy, digamos, a algún comedor así, por ejemplo, a comer pupusas o algo así, un licuado, y de repente le digo yo, mire, quiero un licuado, pero no me le ponga tanta azúcar. Y al final no me hacen caso, como que le ponen la misma cantidad, y a veces queda bien eh, dulce un día de estos, no me lo tomé por esa razón, que estaba demasiado azucarado. Y yo pues ya tengo eso que, que, que con mi esposa, ¿verdad? Decimos, no, no vamos a comer tanta azúcar. Vamos a tener una dieta más saludable. So, that's uh, one of the benefits if you work from home. It's like you don't have to spend money on food. You don't have to spend uh, your time stuck on traffic. Uh, you can spend, you can do whatever you want. You can uh, actually, uh, you can get up late. Like, I mean, you can, you don't have to wake up really early in the morning. Because I know that there are some people that have to wake up around 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. So, that's terrible because they have to spend hours in, in traffic so if you guys have the opportunity to work from home uh, you guys should appreciate that bueno vamos a ver ahora guys eh, que vamos a repasar el día de hoy estoy por acá right, so we no, nos quedamos a, ayer por acá ya habíamos visto esta parte acerca de escribir acerca de un nuestro mejor amigo que ya lo hicieron And then we have the next one, which is by the end of this class, participants will learn how to express likes and dislikes using clauses with it plus adverbial clauses with when. Bueno, ya vimos antes que son las cláusulas, ¿verdad? Dijimos que eran eh, como pequeñas oraciones. Pueden ser dependientes o independientes. Eh, las independientes no necesitan de nada más. Por sí solas tienen sentido por completo. Y las que son eh, dependientes necesitan de otras, ¿ok? Solamente para eh, recordar eso para... Eh, one more time, right? So, now, guys, we're going to talk about clauses with it and when, ¿ok? And especially so we can uh, talk about how something makes us feel, 
like, if something makes us happy, or if something makes us angry or upset, or if we love when something happens. Basically, this is what we are going to learn uh, today, okay? I think that you guys probably, I mean, you, you guys will definitely understand this because it's uh, easy for you, but we need to practice, right? That's like the point of this because it may be that you guys can understand, but maybe we need to practice a little bit. That's usually what I think that is the most important thing uh, to practice because the more we practice, the better we get, right? We, we become like experts on this. So we are going to practice. Bueno, eh, entonces vamos a ver por acá. Vamos a solo rapidito quizá ver la introducción del video. Y luego vamos a hablar acerca de esto. Así que por favor, ahí atentos, ¿verdad? Que le voy a preguntar, ¿ok? I'm going to ask you questions, guys, so please pay attention because I don't want you muted if I ask you something, ¿ok? Vamos a ver, aquí, aquí vamos. Vamos a bajarle la velocidad porque yo soy un, poco, soy un poquito loco y siempre lo pongo más rápido. Aquí ven mis problemas de ansiedad, ¿verdad? No puedo esperar. Well, just can't, guys. I'm just too anxious. I want it now. Me too. <laughs> Hello, everyone. In this class, you'll learn how to express likes and dislikes. And you'll also learn how to express neutral things. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. So let's say, for example, you want to express things that you like. Um, I'm going to use an analogy of a birthday. right? So a uh, quick example. I like it when my friends give me gifts for my birthday. I don't like it when my friends forget about my birthday. There, I just express the likes and dislikes, and I also want to be neutral about certain things. So, in order to do that, I'm going to use expressions such as, I don't mind it when my friends arrive late to a party. So, let's do the following. First, the first thing that we should learn, or that we should become familiar with, is some uh, vocabulary, okay? Uh, and so, let me do just that. Let me just present this quick vocabulary. If you notice, I've highlighted in yellow the positive. So for things that you like, you'll use expressions such as, I like it, I love it. When you're neutral about something, you'll use expressions such as, I don't mind it. And when you want to express things that you don't like, then in that case, you'll use expressions such as, I don't like it, I can't stand it, I hate it. All right, guys, so let me stop uh, here really quick. So. We are going to talk about things that we like, things that we are neutral about, that we don't like or dislike, it's just in the middle. And then we have things that we don't like, right? So these are really good expressions that you guys can use. Uh, I can see that uh, you, you are some of you are uh, taking notes, so that's fine, very good, excellent. And so we have, I like it for things that we like, or I love it. Uh, this is very common, like, when you say that you really like something, like, for example, if you like uh, Mexican food, you can say, I love it. Okay, I love it when people uh, give me Mexican food, because that's my favorite food. Or I love it when people give me compliments. Okay, uh, that's when you really like something, right? And then uh, we have, I don't mind it, when you don't really care if it happens or not, right? Like, for example, uh, I don't mind it, if people uh, talk on the phone when I'm uh, talking to them, okay? That's, I don't think that that's a good example, but you know, just, <laughs> then we have, I don't like it uh, for things that we don't like. I don't like it. Like, I don't like it when people uh, don't listen to me or don't pay attention to me when I'm talking to them, okay? That's really annoying, okay? It really makes me angry, makes me upset, okay? And then you can say, I can't stand it. Okay, básicamente I can stand it. Es como decir que no, no lo puedo aguantar, no lo puedo tolerar. No pasa eso. Y luego, pues lo máximo quizás de que no nos puede gustar algo es como que odio cuando pasa eso. Sí, I hate it. Right? 
So these are expressions that we can use. So we can talk about things that we like, that we don't really care about, things that we don't like, okay? All right, so let's continue. I hate it. So let me just quickly present the structure and how to formulate this kind of complex sentences. So when we say clauses with it, and then we say clauses with when, well, really what we're saying is that we want to express things that we like, that we don't like, or that we're neutral about at any given situation. So let me just present the structure here. What we want to do is we want to use clauses with it and then adverbial clauses with when. Uh, and we do this in order to express the things that we like, the things that we don't like, or the things that we might be neutral about. So as I mentioned at the beginning, we ha I had a, a couple of examples for you. I'll just continue on with making more examples. So, so what kind of things do you like? Well, um, in order to formulate this sentence, to express that idea, we're going to have a subject. In this case, I'm just going to say I. The subject could be any other subject, by the way. Um, I use a verb such as like. So I say I like it, and that's my clause with it. And then the next part, it continues with when. This is the situation. Um, when. All right, so let me just make that quick sentence there. So I like it when someone gives me a compliment. This is something that I like. As you can see, we have the first part of the sentence is the subject plus the verb and it. I like it. And then the second part of that sentence is when someone gives me a compliment. If we quickly look at our vocabulary here, I could say, this could be, now, the, the idea about this is that this could be something that is true for you. This could be something that is not true for you. So we want to express the things that you like, things that you don't like, things that you might be neutral about. So I could use this vocabulary here. So I could easily say, I like it, such as the example here. I like it when someone gives me a compliment. Um, or I could say, I love it. So I'll, I could change the verb. I could change something else here. I could say, I love it when someone gives me a compliment. Um, at the same time, I could also be neutral about it. I could say, I don't mind it. Right. Okay. I don't mind it when someone gives me a compliment. Uh, and then again, you might be shy and you probably don't like it, right? So you might uh, have a negative point of view about that situation. You might say, "I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it when someone gives me a compliment." And that's how you formulate this kind of uh, sentences. Um, again, you could be neutral about the whole situation. You could. Uh, you could um, uh, be positive about it, so you could like it, you could love it, um, and um, at the same time, something could make you upset, right? Um, the examples that I gave earlier where I, so let me follow the structure here, right? So I'm going to say I like it when friends give me gifts for my birthday, okay? So this is something that I like. So I like it when friends give me gifts for my birthday. I don't like it when friends forget about my birthday. Um, it doesn't bother me when friends arrive late to a party. Now, what I would like for you to do is to think about all the things that you like and all the things that you don't like and all the things that you're neutral about. All right, guys. So, um, very good. So, we already had the explanation about these and about things that we like, things that we don't like, things that we are neutral about. So... Just like he said in the video, I would like for you to think about things that you like, things that you don't like, things that you are neutral about, okay? So you can tell me that. Like, I'm going to put the, uh, let's see, the expressions here on the screen uh, so you can look at them, okay? So you can say, for example, I like it when, uh, let's say, or you can, I mean, uh, he said that we can, they use different subjects like it doesn't have to be I it can be like he or she like she likes it when people give her compliments okay a little bit more like complicated but we're talking about somebody else or she loves it when people pay attention to what she's saying okay you can say things like that okay so let's try to think about it let's try to think about things that you like things that you don't uh, care about that you're neutral about, and things that you don't like, okay? Let's do that, please. Vamos a ver, pensemos ahí en cosas que nos gustan, cosas que no nos gustan, y cosas en las cuales no nos importa, okay? Vamos a hacer eso ahorita. ¿Alguna pregunta? Mientras tanto, no sé si tenemos alguna pregunta, guys. Básicamente, se fijaron en la estructura, ¿verdad? Son dos, 
eh, cláusulas. Primero vamos a poner esto de acá, que es el sujeto, el verbo, it. Y luego va a la siguiente cláusula, que es con when. ¿okay? When. Y luego va a ir eh, la cosa que no nos gusta. ¿okay? Por ejemplo, eh, hay muchos ejemplos, la verdad. A mí no me gusta cuando una persona habla durante una película, por ejemplo. O no me importa en realidad cuando una persona ve la televisión mientras yo estoy intentando dormir. Algunas personas sí, ¿verdad? O por ejemplo, eh, hay personas que no pueden dormir si la luz no está apagada. Entonces, eh, no sé ustedes, pero bueno, en mi caso, pues si tengo sueño, yo me duermo hasta en una piedra, donde sea, no tengo ningún problema con eso. Pero hay personas que si les molesta, o el ruido, o cosas por el estilo. Entonces, eh, pensemos en ese tipo de cosas y me las dicen a mí, por favor. I got it. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. So, uh, are you ready or not yet? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, go ahead. Well, when the boy say the at the birthday, I remember when I was a child, I really loved my birthday. Now is not that I don't like, but I usually have to work that day because my birthday is the is at the fighting. Yeah, fighting of December. Okay. 15 of December. Oh, 15th December. Uh -huh. 15. And 15, 15 is the, the 10 multiplied by, by 5. Well, I like to drink coffee when it's cold, but I don't like when the people have sugar. I don't like the sugar. Oh, I, I, I really enjoy the coffee as natural flavor. Mm-hmm. So you enjoy the natural flavor of coffee. You don't like coffee with sugar in it. No. Well, oh. if the people give me coffee with sugar, um, I have a stomachache. Oh, I see. It's okay. like to my body repels I the see. sugar. So it basically upsets your stomach. It doesn't make you feel good. You feel bad if it has yeah. sugar. Yeah. I see. Very interesting. It's my enemy. <laughs> Very interesting. That's that's good. Yeah, I mean that's good. I like it because you are. I, I guess that that makes you healthier because you don't need uh, you don't drink too much sugar. So that's good. Help me for the diet. Very good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very good. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jonathan. I appreciate that. Y tenemos a Evelyn por acá nos compartió dice, I love my friend when she gives me food. And I don't support, I don't support, okay, when my food have onions, uh, the matter if my friend cooks for me, okay. What about dislikes? Uh, dislikes are things that you don't like, okay, it's like the opposite. Que me desagrada, cosas que no me gustan. Bueno, vamos a ver con eh, Evelyn por acá, sí, go ahead, Jared. Mr. Mejibar. Okay. <clears throat> I like to watch movies when I have free, free time. Mm -hmm. I don't like to read when I feel too tired. Eh, vamos a ver. I like to watch movies when... One more time. When I have free time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perdón, es que esto se me va. When I have free time. Okay. Then number two. What was the other one again? One more time. One more time. Okay. I don't like, I don't to, like read to read when I feel too when tired. I feel tired. When I feel too tired. Okay, very good. Is that it? Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Mr. Mejiva. I appreciate that. Okay, then we have uh, Daniela. Go ahead. 
Human fear were highlight health support. I don't know if you can hear me well, but now I'm using headphones, so I have problems here. I'm not at home. But... You sound a little muffled. Actually, I can barely understand sorry. what you're saying. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Well, I'm going to write my sentences and my opinion. Okay? Sure, sure. That sounds good. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Daniela. I appreciate that. Sí, se escucha un poquito como raro ahí, este, pero no hay problema. No sé si ahora me pueden escuchar bien, guys, porque ayer creo que fue, me acuerdo, como alguien me dijo que se me escuchaba un poco bajito. No sé si ahora se me escucha mejor. ¿Me, me pueden escuchar bien ustedes a mí? Yes, yeah, sí, I can. Okay, very good. Thank you. So, dice Rodrigo Hernández, I like it when I spend time with my... And then, blank. Okay, very good. Thank you, Rodrigo. That's perfect. So, and I was going to say something about uh, this one here. It says, I love my friend when she gives me food. And I don't support when my food have onion. So, maybe we can say something a little different because we are uh, trying to uh, practice uh, clauses with it and when. So we can say something like a little bit different, maybe like, I I love it when my friend uh, gives me food, and then uh, I can stand it. I can stand it when my when, when my food has onion in it. Okay, my food has onion in it. Okay, I always say something like that. Recordemos que la comida básicamente es como un nombre no contable, ¿verdad? No decimos foods. Por lo tanto, entonces food and has. ¿Ok? Porque es una como un, un concepto abstracto, por así decirlo. Entonces es una ter como tercera persona, por así decirlo. Una cosa. Entonces, uh, I can't stand it when my food has onion in it. ¿Ok? Very good. Ok, then, uh, Kevin, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. I have a question regarding to the structure we have studying today. Mm -hmm. Do we have to use it? Is it mandatory or it can be replaced by two if we want to include another verb? For example, I like to study when and a situation is happening and I cannot stand when uh any any negative situation or do we or do we need to use i love it for example mm -hmm. then include two and the rest of the sentence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very good very good question kevin thank you so yeah i mean in this case i think that for this uh like let's say this topic that we're trying to study here uh, it is like mandatory, let's say, but I think that you can say that, like I love to study when, I mean, I'm alone, for example, or things like that. But yeah, that's fine. I think that probably there is a little difference in the meaning. Vamos a ver si lo pensamos. Quizás como en español es como que me encanta. Es como que hacemos más énfasis, quizás en eso, ¿verdad? No es como que solamente me encanta estudiar cuando estoy solo. Y lo otro, bueno, casi es lo mismo, la verdad. No creo que habría tanta, tanta diferencia. Creo que no, la verdad. Pero por ahora quizás lo vamos a dejar, eh, nosotros vamos a estudiar esta parte así, porque estamos estudiando esas cláusulas con it y when. ¿okay? Entonces lo vamos a hacer de esta forma. Aunque creo que sí, prácticamente es el mismo significado. Pero buena pregunta la de Kevin. Vamos a ver, I like it. Vamos a ver, ¿alguien más? ¿Alguna otra pregunta o algún otro ejemplo? Vamos Teacher, uh -huh. I want to say my example. Sure, sure. go ahead. Okay. Is, I like travel when my family have vacation, but I don't like travel when we use the bus. When my family has vacations. Okay, so you said I like to travel with when my family has vacations, but yes, I don't, I don't 
like traveling? When we use the bus? When we use the bus. Okay, very good. Okay. Right, very good. Very good. Thank you so much, Nora. I appreciate that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, very good example. Uh, just a couple of things that maybe we can change. Like, okay. I like to travel when my family... Uh, yeah, I think that that's fine. Yeah, I think, yeah, never mind. I like to travel okay. when my family has vacations, but I don't like to travel when uh, we have to uh, take the bus or when we have to, okay. mm, uh, yes. let's say, drive uh, by, I don't know, travel by bus, I, something like that, maybe. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, vamos a ver, por acá tenemos otro ejemplo de Kevin. Dice, I like it to study when the light is clearer. And I can stand when uh, the day, I guess, is cloudy and rainy. Yeah. Okay. So, very good. Very good. Uh, es que creo que caen en los ejemplos que estamos ahorita, por así decirlo, estudiando. Como que hacemos énfasis en una cosa, ¿verdad? Es como que, por ejemplo, me gusta cuando me hacen un cumplido. Me gusta... Eh, cuando las personas hacen esto. O sea, es como que, es como algo de énfasis en esa acción, ¿verdad? Eh, y por lo general como de, de alguien más. Pero bueno, eh, porque acá los otros ejemplos que tenemos, I like to play with my cat when she is full of energy. Bueno, también, también. Or I hate to read uh, when my neighbors listen to music. Sí, creo que es una forma diferente de decirlo, pero está bien también, está bueno. Ok, muy bien, muy bien, Jacqueline. Very good. I like to play, I like it. Uh -huh. ah, creo que estamos bien. Muy bien, guys. Buena, muchas gracias por los ejemplos. Eh, tratemos también de usar esa como estructura que estamos viendo acá, ¿ok? Como I like it when, let's say, uh, it is quiet because I can play with my cat, ¿ok? Me gusta cuando está eh, en silencio porque puedo jugar con mi gato. O, o por ejemplo, uh, I hate it when... People do this, ¿ok? Es como que creo, creo que esa es la, la clave, como que tiene más énfasis en la acción, ¿ok? En lo que nos gusta o lo que no nos gusta. Creo que esa es la, la clave. Por lo demás, su, sus ejemplos están bastante bien, ¿ok? Vamos a ver. Entonces, no sé si tenemos alguna otra pregunta eh, por ahora. Vamos a ver, Kevin. Basically, we need to focus on a simple activity that likes or do or don't like mm -hmm. and when it happens exactly. like i la i like i like it when movie is extended or is explicit mm -hmm. and i can stand when movie is short exactly yes very okay. good very good explanation kevin very good there you go Okay, entonces, como dijo Kevin, básicamente es como que nos enfocamos como en una acción, en algo en específico, ¿verdad? Es como la, la clave de esto. Fíjense acá, dice, no me gusta cuando alguien me da un cumplido. Puede ser, ¿verdad? Entonces, estamos como enfocándonos en esa parte, que no me gusta eso. O, por ejemplo, me gusta cuando eh, mis amigos me dan eh, regalos por mi cumpleaños. O sea, me gusta. Estamos como expresando que sí nos gusta. Básicamente de eso se trata el tema. Likes dislikes and things that we are neutral about okay like for example like, like i told you before we can say like i, I don't mind uh, i don't mind it when people uh, talk on on their phones at the movies okay probably you guys go to the movies and you don't really care if somebody is on the phone because uh, you get like so into the movie that you don't pay attention to anything else that that could be it But some other people don't like it. Some other people hate it when somebody is on the phone at the movies, right? So we are just like making an emphasis on that specific uh, situation. Okay, vamos a ver un poco más por acá. Por acá tenemos el knowledge check, que es la siguiente parte. Dice, ¿cómo te sientes acerca de estas situaciones? Acá tenemos más expresiones. Eso es otra cosa que les quería decir que no, no, no todas las expresiones terminan de esa forma, como I love it or stand it, o, que termine con it, no todas, ¿ok? 
Hay algunas, por ejemplo, como esta. It makes me happy. Or it bothers me. It embarrasses me. It really upsets me. Okay. Uh, it's like the other way around, right? Okay. En este caso, el it va como al inicio, okay? Pero siempre es como el mismo significado. Si se fijan acá, dice me molesta, okay? It, it really bothers me when people talk loudly, loudly during a movie, okay? It really upsets me when people talk loudly during a movie, for example. So, tenemos estos otros ejemplos, estas otras expresiones, ustedes las pueden ir anotando. Uh, estas ya las teníamos, I love it, I can't stand it, it bothers me, es como me molesta, eh, I don't like it, bueno, no hay mucha explicación para eso, no me gusta, it embarrasses me, me, me avergüenza, ok, no es que me embaraza, ¿verdad? No voy a pensar que me embaraza. Ok. <laughs> Broma, guys. Just kidding. Uh, don't pay attention to me. I'm just make some really bad jokes sometimes. So I'm sorry about that. Ok. It doesn't bother me. Eh, eso es otro que no, no me molesta. It makes me happy. Ok. Si se fijan, empiezan como que con it. It, 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 it. Ok. It really upsets me. I don't mind it. And then we have here uh, some uh, situations like we have when someone gives me a compliment on my clothes. How does that make you feel? It makes you happy. I, you hate it. You like it. Okay. How does that make you feel? When people are direct and say what's on their mind, how do you feel about that? Acá básicamente eh, tenemos la opción de colocar cualquiera de estas expresiones, ¿verdad? Dice, miren, ustedes, you may use, I love it, I can't stand it, when, it makes me happy, it bothers me, it embarrasses me. Cualquiera de esas, ¿ok? Eso es lo que vamos a poner acá. ¿Estamos claros? ¿Alguna pregunta con estas expresiones o algo? Creo que ya vamos a practicar un poco más, guys, así que don't, don't worry. I want you to practice. De hecho, no me han dicho todos, la verdad. Creo que como solo Jonathan quizás fue que me dijo sus oraciones. Los demás las escribieron por el, por el chat. ¿Qué pasó? Necesito que me las digan también. No, don't be afraid, guys. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. You can tell me. Walter. It, be, it really upset me when people complain too much about everything. During the whole day, very good. Yeah, I, I don't like that kind of people because it's, uh, it's negative people, and sometimes um, you are uh, you are feeling good, you are in a good mood, mm -hmm. and those kind of people is really uh, they have a bad vibe, vibes, I think, mm -hmm. vibes. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Very good. Thank you so much, Walter. Very good. Yep, so I don't like it either. It's like, uh, I think that we all should be surrounded by people with a positive attitude, not people that... It's really annoying. Mm -hmm. It's really annoying, yes. Yeah. It, yeah. Like, I mean, it makes me really upset, too. I I, I agree to you. I, I agree with you. It's really uncomfortable when you are with someone like that. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So Daniela says that she's okay. Very good. Thank you. No, no worries, Daniela. I understand that. No problem. Yeah. Very good. Very good example, Walter. I think that here's okay. I got it. Okay. I got it. Thank you. What else uh, makes you happy or makes you uh, bothers you or upsets you? Uh, what can you tell me, guys? Let's say something that embarrasses you. Okay. Vamos a ver, Kevin, algo que le avergüence a usted, por ejemplo. Vamos a ver. Um, it, it, embarrass, it embarrasses me when I want to speak mm -hmm. in, or in one language, or, for example, English or French. Mm -hmm. And I don't know the word, and I have to try to use some mimics or use the English word or French word for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good, very good, Kevin. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 
I, I think that we all feel like that at some point because it's like uh, we feel uncomfortable and we feel like the other person is going to uh, is going to think that we are silly that we don't know that yeah go ahead I work in a call center so most of the time when you speak with Americans mm -hmm. they always want to talk in a way that in sorry in the same way that they do so I remember one day I was talking with a customer and she told me we are halfway through and I didn't understand what what she mean. So I just said yes to we halfway through. Then I searched <laughs> in the net, found that it was basically half the way. So oh gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's something that embarrasses me. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I know what you mean. Yes, uh, I think that we all feel like that at some point. And it's really embarrassing when you don't know and you just say yes or whatever because you don't know exactly what they are referring to. So, yeah, I mean, that's something that can happen. And I understand that if you work in a call center, uh, probably people, the customers or whatever, uh, they have, I mean, in the U.S., there are a lot of different accents and a lot of different like expressions uh it's really difficult i mean at some point you may not understand something so you have the opportunity sometimes uh like to ask for clarification then that's something good i mean some people are are nice and they will tell you oh sure uh, so this is the meaning i I'm, I'm, i was trying to say that uh for example we are half uh, into the, the the process or something like that. It may not be all the time, right? Sure, go ahead. Or when you talk with East people, for example, the Arabics or the African people, right. <laughs> Asian people, they always say that their accent is the best, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's complicated. Right. Because um, you can be very clear to understand when a Chinese is talking, mm -hmm. but it's very different when someone, for example, in Egypt, called you and start talking. Right. So, yeah, it's a situation a bit complicated where we right. can... Maybe we might say a we might make a sentence like, "I love it when Asian people calls, and I can I can't stand when East people try to talk." <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. So yeah, you can say, "I love it when Asian people call." Okay, just like that. Not, not calls. Not calls. Ok, muy bien, muy bien. Vamos a ver, Daniela, creo que por ahí tal vez ya tiene una mejor eh, conexión, mejor audio. Vamos a ver. I want to confess something. Sure. When, uh -huh. yeah, when American people or somebody who can't speak in English came to my home or a place where my mom and dad is, my problem is that my mom, she only can say, she can't speak English. <laughs> And I know my English is not the best. So I'm really embarrassed. It embarrasses me a lot <laughs> when my mom when my mom said that because um I'm not a bilingual girl. I just only know some words and I can't understand, I don't know, the idea. But that all and when I'm trying to say something, it's difficult for me because I, I know that I don't have the basis, I don't I don't have grammar. So I just only try. To explain what I'm thinking and what I'm trying to say and hope the other person can understand me because they a native a native person. I don't know if I can if uh -huh. I explain the right things. So <laughs> it embarrasses me a lot when my mom say she can't speak English. I can't speak English well so that's <laughs> difficult for me. I don't know. I'm ashamed all the time. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate that. 
Yeah, I think that parents can embarrass us sometimes like that <laughs> because, uh, I mean, they think that we are the best sometimes. They think that we are experts on technology. They think that we are the best on languages and things like that. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much, Daniel. I appreciate that. Vamos a ver, Jared, mujer que dice, por acá. It's embarrassing to me that a girl pays the bill for a coffee or dinner. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Good example, uh, Jared. We can rephrase it. We can uh, just kind of adjust your idea to what we are learning right now. So maybe you can say something like, it embarrasses me when a girl uh, pays the bill, for example. Okay. Vamos a intentarlo otra vez, Jared. Vamos a decirlo de esa forma. Eh, se lo voy a anotar por acá para que veamos, por si acaso no, no, no se me entiende. Uh, vamos a ponerlo como que it embarrasses me when a girl pays the bill. Okay, for example, uh, can you go ahead and say it like this? It embarrasses me when a girl pays the bill. Very good. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Good job. Very good. Ahí está. Estas palabras son un poquito más difíciles de pronunciar. Yo también por eso a veces les, les pido a ustedes que me las digan porque eh, a mí al menos se me traba, todavía se me traba la lengua un poco a veces. Entonces es bueno que las practiquemos, ¿verdad? Realmente lo importante, según dicen, ok, eh, yo que he investigado un poco, que tenemos que nosotros, no tanto como practicar una y otra vez, sino que otra vez intentar que nuestros músculos de la boca, de la garganta y todo eso, se acostumbren a hacer el movimiento adecuado para producir el, el sonido adecuado, ¿ok? Entonces tenemos que nosotros hacer eso, tratar de eh, acostumbrarnos a pronunciarlo de la forma correcta, ¿ok? Así que muy buen trabajo, guys. Very good job. You're, you guys are awesome. Okay, vamos a ver aquí entonces qué más. Esa era la parte eh, para esto. Luego teníamos por acá una lectura acerca de aplicaciones. Okay. So we have an, uh, this is a video, it's a short video, it just lasts for one minute and, and 11 seconds. And this is about apps. So we can kind of uh, be able to discuss uh, like about apps, basically. Okay. So we're going to listen to the video like really quick and then we are going to talk about that a little bit. Okay. Vamos a ver almost anywhere communicating on a buzz hi everyone by the end of this class you'll improve your reading skills by developing skills and identifying main ideas and understanding meaning from context in this class we'll read an article about the amazing world of apps short for applications you'll take notes of new words and pronunciation of difficult words I'll read the article for you but the goal is that you'll also read it making sure you're pronouncing the words correctly after reading the article your task is to complete the short quiz related to the article so let's get started I'll start by reading the article In 2010, the American Dialect Society chose App as the word of the year. App is short for application. It's a program for an electronic device like a smartphone or a tablet computer. There are more than 425,000 apps that can be downloaded for entertainment, shopping, sports, scores, and anything else you might be interested in. Apps are so popular because they can be used almost anywhere, communicating on a bus, waiting in a doctor's office, or hanging out at the mall. And all you need is your smartphone. You don't need to log into your computer or into a website. You don't have to set up your video game console. You don't even need a Wi-Fi connection. Most smartphones can hold hundreds of apps, and you can use more than one app at a time. For instance, you can use a navigation app to find a new restaurant, a dining app to look at the restaurant's menu, and a weather forecast app to decide what to wear to the restaurant, all at the same time. One of the most popular apps, Angry Birds, has been downloaded by more than 50 million people. In 2010, this app was played 200 million minutes daily by app users or 1.2 billion hours a year. The Apple Store began selling apps in 2008 with nearly 1 billion sold. In 2010, nearly 3 billion apps were sold at an average price of $2.13. Not only are apps popular, they're also profitable. All right, there we go, guys. And so, vamos a ver por acá, voy a reír un poco. So let's get started. I'll start by. Bueno. Vamos a hablar un poquito acerca de esto. Vamos a ver. Eh, me gustaría que alguien me ayude a leer un poquito por acá. Vamos a también practicar esta parte. The reading. I, I know that, you know, actually this is something that is really interesting because 
uh, in Spanish, I think that, I don't know about you, but when it comes to me, I'm not really good sometimes at reading. It's like um, I don't make the right pauses. I don't have a good intonation sometimes. So I, I want to help you on this. Maybe we can practice a little bit of reading. Vamos a ver, Jonathan. Me gustaría que lea de acá donde dice app, short for application. Uh, hasta aquí, como hasta el final, por favor. First paragraph. Desde acá donde dice app, entre comillas. Well, in 2010, the American Geology City. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. App as the word of the year. App is a short for application. It's a program for an electronic device like a smartphone or a tablet computer. 20. 25 and 2,000, 200,000. I don't remember what is that, that correct <laughs> as this number. Okay, one more time. Uh, one that more time, can yeah, be the loader. Before you continue, it's uh, 425,000, okay? One more time. 425,000. Uh-huh, one more time, please. 400, well. App as the word of the year. App is a short for application. It's a program for an electronic device like a smartphone or a tablet computer. There are more than um, 400. 425. 40, 425. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. Apps that can be downloaded for entertainment, shopping, sports scores and anything else you might be interested in very good very good thank you so much only that, that the number is so hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know yes it can be challenging sometimes uh, when it comes to numbers uh, that's the reason why i ask you to do this because i know that it may it may seem easy we understand that because we see the number and we already know uh, in espanol verdad ya sabemos cuánto es pero tal vez en inglés a veces en Ahí como que decimos, pero acá como es, eh, cuatro, eh, nos confundimos, ¿verdad? Ok, entonces vamos ahora, Daniela. Yeah, ¿Vale? I want to practice. <ríe> Very good, thank you, Jonathan. Bueno, entonces ahora tenemos a Daniela que va a leer esta parte de acá. Ok. Apps are so popular because they can be used almost anywhere. Community, commuting on a bus, waiting in a doctor's office, or hanging out at the mall. And all you need is your smartphone. You don't need to log into your computer or into a website. You don't have to set up your video games console. You don't even need a Wi-Fi. Sorry, but I can read the other word. <laughs> Connection. Connection. Something is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no problem. There is. It's okay. Okay, Daniela, thank you. Well, mm -hmm. vamos a ver. Me gustaría hacerle un par de preguntas, Daniela. Eh, ¿Qué significa esta palabra, commuting? Ni idea. No sabe, ok. <ríe> commuting básicamente se refiere, eh, para todos, se refiere como a viajar, ok. Es como cuando nos transportamos, por lo general para el trabajo, ok. So, on my commute, you can say, uh, I was on my commute, ok. I, I'm going to work, for okay. example. And then, uh, another thing, eh, ¿qué significa como log into your computer or into a website. What does that mean? You don't need to log into. Uh -huh. ¿Qué significa eso? Que no necesita entrar en la computadora en, o, en un, o en un sitio web. Very good. Very good. I like it. Thank you so much. And then the last thing, uh, it says you don't have to set up your video game console. You don't have to set up. Tú no necesitas ni siquiera eh, como encender, digamos. O entrar sí. en tu juego. Sí, básicamente es como que no necesita como prepararlo ni nada por el estilo, ¿ok? Básicamente. Ok. Mm -hmm. Ok, very good. Thank you so much, Daniel. I appreciate that. And the reason Thank why you. I ask you these things... <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. The reason why I ask you these things, guys, is because sometimes we may have an idea, but we don't know exactly what it means, ¿ok? We just see it and then we say, ok, I, I know what it means, but we may not exactly know what it means, ¿ok? Vamos a ver, entonces acá ya eh, participó Daniela, también Jonathan, 
vamos a ver, no sé si seguimos con esta parte porque tenemos que ir avanzando, ¿verdad? A ver, déjenme salir de acá. Me cuesta un poco, ahí está. No creo que nos vamos a quedar hasta ahí, con esa parte. Muchas gracias a ambos. Vamos a avanzar, guys, porque esta semana recordemos que tenemos que terminar. Eh, entonces, en base a, eso, a ese video, ustedes tienen que contestar estos, eh, estas preguntas, ¿ok? Tenemos, according to the article, what are some common uses of apps, ¿ok? Uh, find a new restaurant, uh, wait yourself, look at the restaurant's menu, check the weather. So you only uh, click on it, like, for example, this, and this one, for example, and then uh, you submit the answers. Uh, by clicking on this uh, button, it right now is grayed out because uh, we need to choose uh, at least one option for each one of the questions. So that's the reason why it's not letting me uh, do it. But if you click on it, then it should work like this, right? All right, very good. Bueno, entonces tenemos que hacer esa parte y luego, pues ya pasaríamos nosotros a la sección número dos. Tenemos acá eh, la sección número dos, que es acerca de, eh, nosotros vamos a aprender acerca de el mejor trabajo basado en nuestro tipo de personalidad, ¿ok? So, it says, by the end of the, cl the class, you will learn about the best jobs based on personality types, ¿ok? So, I don't know if you ever heard about these guys, but we all have, like, different personalities. Like, when I was at uh, one job, Like many years ago, uh, they told me that people can be like emotional. There are some people that can be controllers. And there are people that can be, uh, I mean, there are different types of personalities. So based on that, uh, we, we react differently to things, right? Like, for example, our job, if you are emotional, uh, maybe you can have a good, uh, uh, you, you, you can be good at, customer service, for example, because you may be able to empathize with other people, or maybe you can work in the medical field, like a doctor or a nurse, something like that, because you may want to help other people because of that. So that's basically what we are going to learn, how to identify like the best job based on each personality, okay? Like this, social careers, we have teaching, we have medicine, coaching, a uh, All that kind of things, right? Bueno, <clears throat> eh, ¿cómo hacemos, guys? Creo que vamos a escuchar rapidito el video porque ya casi se nos acabó el tiempo. Eh, vamos a solamente empezar con esta parte para que ustedes eh, puedan terminarlo eh, eh, más adelante, ¿ok? Vamos a ver. Advisor, from the Career Services Department here on campus. Welcome to Matheson College. I'm Jamie Fitch. Some students arrive on campus with clear career ambitions, but most students need some help figuring out which field of study is right for them. The good news is, help is available. I'm here with Jacqueline Auden, a career advisor from the Career Services Department here on campus. Ms. Auden, you've advised a lot of students over the years about choosing a major and a career path. What should students consider? Well, Jamie, one of the first things to consider is your personality type. Well, along with your skills, abilities, and personal preferences, your personality type can guide you toward finding a major that best suits you. Okay. So how many personality types are there? Well, there are six basic personality types. Artistic, conventional, enterprising, investigative, realistic, and social. Now, the first type is artistic. These people are creative and imaginative, and they prefer to work on one project at a time rather than multitasking. What career should artistic types pursue? The most important thing for this type of people is being in charge of a creative project. So careers to consider are landscaping, graphic design, web design. I see. The next personality type is conventional. Tell us about that one. Yes. Conventional types are practical and orderly. They respond well to rules, procedures, schedules, things like that. Hmm. What types of careers do conventional type people usually enjoy? Conventional types often enjoy numbers. And they're also good with measuring and analyzing things in general. So often they tend to be bankers, lawyers, building inspectors, and technical writers. Are they good business people? Sure, they can be. They usually work for others. 
The next type, enterprising people, those are the business owners. Ah, the enterprising type. What characteristics do those people share? They tend to be leaders. They're independent and willing to take risks. They're good at motivating people, so we often find them in sales. Really? Hmm. What careers do they enjoy, aside from sales? Well, they're good at directing projects and people, so they make good managers. Okay, so that's three types. Let's take a look at the fourth type, investigative. Well, this type of person prefers logic to imagination and tends to be precise and detailed. So, Jamie, what are some careers that you think would suit this type of person? Hmm. Science would probably be appealing. You're right. Uncovering mysteries is key to any type of science, but librarians are also the investigative type. Really, any career that involves research fits into this category. Hmm. So that brings us up to the fifth type, realistic. Yes, realistic types like to work with their hands, with tools. They want to see the results of their work in physical terms. Hmm. That sounds like repair people to me. Yes, that's right. Also jewelry makers, builders, and engineers. So now for the sixth personality type, which is the one that describes me best. Yes, I think you're right. <laughs> the last type is social. Social types mm -hmm. like people. Their jobs usually involve helping and communicating with others. Oh, but teaching would appeal to social types. Oh, yes. Medicine, coaching, broadcast journalism, and, of course, career advising. That's us, social types. <laughs> Ms. Auden, thank you for sharing this information with us. It was my pleasure, Jamie. Well, we hope this information has been helpful to you. If you'd like to learn more, visit the Career Services Department and tell them Jamie sent you. Right, there we go, guys. Uh, very good. Do you like it? I liked it. Really interesting. Maybe I should be the social type, right? Because I'm in the teaching field. So maybe I'm sociable and I didn't know that. Okay. So guys, uh, I think that we are going to just uh, leave it uh, here for now because it's already 9 p.m. and you guys probably have other things to do. So um, remember, we don't have classes tomorrow and I will see you again on Friday. Okay. We will finish with section number two. I promise. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye, guys. Thanks. Take care. Bye.